Hello. Nice to see you, at least see camera. So my today's talk is about robotics and artificial intelligence. You have heard the artificial intelligence talks all the day and you probably hear them more. And probably you are much more confused today than you, where you were yesterday. So I go further, I start to go to the robotics and try to explain how artificial intelligence and machines can interact. Okay, can I switch the slide? Okay, so I like to kind of citate Jack Ma, the founder of uh, Alibaba, who actually said that in long future, robots can be replaced, robot can replace people, even in a world where we think that people are invasible and very much they are more like friends or assistants for people, not uh, enemies, like people like to vision. I have two pictures also on slide. One is as robot helps persons to put the drywall. This is my favorite job for robots. And another picture is about how the future member of parliament, the left, the right one, with his or its assistant uh, is working in parliament. So if we can replace some people in today's Estonian parliament with robots, it will be much easier and faster. You can submit all the changes of laws, millions in one hour, and you can treat them and reject them, millions in one hour. So that will be much, much more effective. So next, I can, ah. Uh, Okay, so what is the robotics? Uh, robotics is more like uh, programming machines and they can perform tasks with human or autonomously. They have probably lots of sensors. Uh, they also can uh, take input from the environment and they can adapt with the environment. And they have some tasks in one moment. I have one nice video, so I a little bit comment the video. See, so people talk about robotics. What is the next generation of robotics? What is the robotics today? So robots, we hope that they will work with people. They interact with people. They are smarter than people, but they also more consistent and make less, uh, less errors. Uh, we can kind of transfer our capabilities to machines, but also we can uh, enhance them. They can be much, much more capable. And people who are working on this field, they kind of have six areas, how the robots are divided, uh, let's say intelligent robots. So the first phase is what we see today in industry. Robots are working in, uh, they have dedicated tasks. They do, but they are trained to do, but they, they are teach to do. The teaching is done by people, highly educated people. Sometimes we call them programmers or software engineers. Uh, they are very configured. They know exactly what they do, but they don't expect any unexpected certainties outside of the world. So the environment is very much defined. They are much, much more effective. Today's factory has, let's say, 100 times less people than uh, yesterday's factory. But these people are highly educated. They, they need to train robots. And that is why industry people say that uh, taking account new product is very expensive because this is actually not the device expense. This is actually expense of these people who need to teach a robot new kind of task. And if you go to another task, this is kind of new problem. But these kind of factories are very, very common. We see they are much, much better than people. They don't get tired. They are, they are ready for routine, they are much more precise, and they kind of uh, actions are, pre pre but the problem is they are rigidly defined. Only way we you 
The only reason why we use the manipulator like hand is because this is highly reprogrammable, -program like a PC or personal computer laptop. So the next phase is, they call it reactive machines. Uh, machines uh, who have sensors from outside world. They can ha have feedback. Uh, there are several reasons why you need feedback. First, you need to somehow avoid some problems from outside, or vice versa, you should go positively on that signal. So you, you can find a light, you can find a radio signal, you can find a sound. We all have seen the robots who can actually follow the line. These are like that. So this is also chess playing robot is one of way, because this chess is defined today already, so you can just move the pieces for people. We can have, in the internet is full of nice videos, but what, let's like say, poster dynamics can do. But these are kind of a top cream, top of a cream. Today's robots are, they can be much more wider use and much more simple tasks. They can understand people. And the, I will say the main problem of, for these robots is to operate in an environment which is meant for people. We are a little bit different than machines. So to make some task, machines can do it uh, much more easier and faster if the environment is defined. We can see it at home, but uh, after the robot vacuum cleaner comes, we redesign our doors to make floor accessible for everyone. So, there is another branch which is called teleoperated robots. It's a little bit off, off a line, but there is so many tasks in the world that we actually still need person. We need kind of extens extension of a person. In some reasons, first, uh, you can't travel so fast as you like, and uh, we need uh, smart persons to divide themselves. But also, there's a lot of tasks where people cannot be present. Uh, and we can think that, OK, what's well, just teleoperation, that I'm doing at home that. And machine does exactly the same. But it's not so easy, because we can't uh, transfer all the know-how all the sensorics that person has over the network. So robots should have sensors, they should have a local understanding of environment, and still kind of advanced uh, knowledge, where we can call it artificial intelligence. And you see now the robot surgeon developed more than 10 years ago. Today they are much, much faster, much, much better, but still you will not trust automatic person to your body, at least not in compli complicated cases, because the environment inside you is very much, let's say, undefined. Okay, you have lungs in some places and that, but still, going to details, it's not so easy. Okay, drones, uh, definitely, very popular topic today. But all the space, all the minings, all the nuclear power stations, there's things that people don't want to be there, or at least it's very, very complicated. So we can do it outside, it's safer. And one problem here is that people who are working in these environments are specialists and trained for something else. They are either good doctors, or either good miners, or either good geologists, or either good whatever. And they should not be trained as school teleoperators. And this is the next phase of robotics we kind of face. If we talk about robotics, we very much show the humanoid. Okay, next phase is autonomous robots. Robots will actually work without human supervision. They can do simple tasks today already. Like uh, in industry, it's easy because the environment is very much controlled and if somebody builds factory today, they foresee that there will be machines moving around, delivering, picking things up. 
we, we create actually environment for robots, but not uh, making robots smarter in that sense. But these robots have cognitive sensing, they have sensors, they are aware of people in the environment, so it's kind of a next phase that robots can share workspace with people around. They are safe in some sense, but they can also be more adaptive. So transport robots are very well known. Autonomous cars deliver the robots. They are well spread. They all have some deficiencies today. They can't be completely autonomous. They have some autonomous functions. You can move from point A to point B, but still, the environment should be rebuilt. There has to be excellent communication. And there's one more problem, we don't trust robots. If a person makes an accident, we know, we have used to that. We have a lot of laws around that, who is guilty or in which case we are not guilty. But in case of robots, we are kind of uh, very restricted. We should not have any mistakes anyway, but we'll, that will never be that way. So next phase is humanoids. This is kind of, again, top of a dream. This is actually the field where all the robot people, mechan mechatronics engineers, IT people, join the forces to make something which is advanced technology. Because person is, we have hundreds of thousands of years of evolution behind us. Uh, we are quite advanced. So we try to repeat ourselves which is dream of mankind, but we also try to make a better version of us. Is it necessary for functionality? I would say so-so, not always, but it's sometimes very useful if we go to a phase where the robots and machines talk with people or interact with people. We are used to talk with something which looks like human, and we are looking for body language, we are looking for mimics, we are looking for emotions. There is much more than just words. So this is kind of a way to understand how we communicate. Because if I'm looking on humanoid robot today, we are like, hmm, something is completely wrong. We kind of immediately understand. It goes to the something which we call cuteness. So everybody thinks that Pepper is cute. And the Hansen Robotics is kind of a terrifying. By the way, Hansen Robotics was founded, I think, 2005 or something around that. And the first innovation was actually the skin. They are not going to AI on that moment, but now they are trying to make that. And you see, if you're looking on that robot, I'm kind of, hmm, okay, nice, but probably move further. And now, today is the coexistence. In same space, in same room, collaboration. Like us, uh, you don't need to be trained people. So we go to them further. And the next phase of that is that we kind of enhance ourselves, okay, these, these videos about uh, changing uh, lost limbs or something like that are very popular, but it actually makes uh, that much more. You can also help uh, normal people in the sense that uh, we can extend our capabilities. And of course, in that case, we always show the videos of war. Unfortunately, I have to say that there is nothing better for technology development than one war. So we can uh, get funding for technology in case of war much, much easier because there is an emergent need in human brain cells, kind of. Uh, defense is very important. We can see that in Estonia here also today. But, uh, can I move to the next slide? Okay. One thing, one slide I wanted to add here was uh, we have a lot of prejudices, something which journalism, internet, and everybody has told us about robotics. 
So the robots we see today almost being ready have been in movies long time ago. Star Wars, movies like that. So people expect from robots things which are not there yet. And on the other hand, we have so silly, silly examples of uh, mistakes that uh, <coughs> the, the small photo that show, says in Prisma that there is no available gadgets. And everybody is laughing. And OK, this is not artificial intelligence. This is just happens and because of people. So do you think, can you kill the sound? OK, so uh, I can speak louder. Uh, what will be changed? We can uh, communicate with peop uh, machines so that we talk with people. We don't need training. And I, the video shows a very nice example. We are doing the training for kids in schools and kindergartens. They learn to operate with robots several times faster than teachers. Not because they are smarter. If we, OK, they are smarter. We like to think that our kids are much smarter than us. But actually, they are young. They are able to learn. They adapt the logic with robots. This is the reason why they are so good in mobile phones. But we actually need that robots learn, act like us. That is what will be changed very soon. And uh, another thing what will be changed very soon is we can share the workspace. The video on top shows our kind of development in hospitals where robots can move around the hospital, uh, deliver blood samples or whatever samples from one wing of hospital to another wing. The project started during the COVID when movement of people around the hospital was very much limited. Now, the immediate need is a little bit over, but still we need something which does simple jobs in hospitals. But the hospital is a very complicated uh, environment because medicine has priority. We can't change the uh, environment, how medicine works. Sometimes they have some rules. Most of times they are just uh, moving around very randomly. And sometimes they are really in hurry. The robot should understand that they have something which is defined, like house, doors, elevators. But there is something that's moving around the hospital completely unpredictable. So that makes the AI part complicated. And also, people like to see people. That's the reason uh, it sh looks like almost humanoid. Otherwise, we just put more small wagon in, in functionality, say. And another video. Can I? points need to be taught. Using the built in job. You and again free drive the sound? The so this is our thing, but uh, in fact, there is. First, I said that we need programmers and uh, data analysts how to program a machine. But here I, we can see that the person who actually works in a factory can teach what to do, and robot learns from that. And this is safe for person. This is one of the uh, most advances for production. So, thank you. Thank you, Alva, very much for your interesting talk at the videos. Wow. I mean, I only have one question to you because uh, soon we will be followed by a debate uh, panel and then uh, you can talk uh, more. But I was wondering, with the use of uh, digital technologies, we already know that the technology that can be used for something good can be at the same time used for something bad or even criminal or very dangerous. So my question to you is, are you afraid of robots? No, not actually, because uh, first machines or robots can learn much better than people. And you said they can do bad, which is exactly that uh, 
robots are not mean. These things that machines do bad, comes, they come from humans, so from our basic instincts, let's say. They don't have them, <laughs> not yet, at least. <laughs> All right, that sounds very... Ah, very nice and comforting, but, uh, or not. But uh, thank you very much, and now we are ready for our panel discussion. And Christian, please.